Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Vincent and this is the first video of my tutorial series where I want to talk about the updates in the new cinema 2024. So let's directly start. I have a few scenes prepared in which I want to talk about some nice things and also some issues which are still uh, currently available, but these are just some quick uh, ideas. But I want to start with this scene and it's actually still rendering on my computer but I just had to cancel it because you can see the gray line is moving through the object. I made a mistake with the projection of it but overall this scene really gave me a lot of headaches and this was the uh, version which I rendered before that and it looks super weird and wrong and I want to go through this scene. So actually this is the first one I had and this file here is like the cache version in Cinema 4D and this looks like this. But if you render the scene, exactly this stuff will come out from Redshift. And I don't know why and what the issue is here, but overall I'm using emitters and emitters are really bad with Cinema 4D. Because it's the amount of topology is changing, the polygon count is changing, and Redshift can't render motion blur in there and the cache was totally fucked up as you can see here and yeah it, it surprisingly took long to create this scene even though it's so easy and simple. Let's perhaps start with the sponge so I will start a new scene and I will create a cube which is my base as a sponge and I will make it um, of course I took the wrong scale here let me quickly change my view and I don't know how, how big is a sponge 15 centimeters by 3 by 10 this was the base I did and as a next thing I created a sphere and then we need to create a cloner put the cloner the sphere into the cloner and I want a small sphere of like two centimeters then on the cloner let's make the grid way smaller like five by five and actually we need to change the array to honeycomb and let's also make it small like five by five and we are in the wrong axis so let's switch to y and everything is still way too big so I just can select my cloner overall and just scale this a bit down then the spheres into position now my offset is still too much then we need to create a volume builder and a volume measure and i'm pressing alt so these two get automatically stacked into each other so let's drag them into the heroes select the cloner in there put the cube in there as well change the voxel size to something more reasonable because we're working in real world scale so my sponge is very small so we need relatively small voxel size of 0.5 and i think this is a good starting point for our sponge. Then we need to cut off all the edges. I will just create a cube, scale that down, put it into position. So this is the first one and I'll duplicate it. Just move it onto the other side. Let me quickly see around where, where I'm cutting off the right amount of it. And I think if you would have remembered the right scale then it would have been easier to position them by scale but i'm doing this by eyeballing and let's rotate everything by 90 degrees and now we created the perfect cutoff of our sponge then let's put them in a group let's call them cut off put them into the volume builder in the volume builder we select the group and we want to subtract it we did a pretty good job but well our base sponge is a little bit too short so let's make it a bit longer and now it looks super nice now it's easier to adjust the cloner and the size of the clone so for example we can select the cloner move everything up or down a little bit to get the certain height we want or we could change the scale again a bit uh, i mean the position so let's make them a little bit more narrow and let's try to make the sphere a bit smaller and also increasing my segments because in this case we are it doesn't matter the more the better for a volume builder let's drop down the voxel size and now we are quite sharp and this edge looks kind of weird here so i think for the cloner we need to make the clones a bit more tight and even more and then reposition the cloner a little bit to to the yeah like this and now i think this is a pretty good sponge start now move it a little bit more up or this was too much a little bit less then we need to smooth everything out so we put the smoothing on top of all our selection here switch the smoothing from gaussian to median or if this is still too much to median curvature and now everything's just 
a little bit smoothed. And let me see. I still have the feeling we should move the cloner a tiny bit to the right side. Something like this. Yeah, I mean, it depends on your liking and your style. You could try different sizes for the spheres and different positions, like just quickly showing you if to put them way more down, you just have more this peak coming up, but I'm good with this. Overall, I think we can even increase the voxel size and increase means typing a smaller number, so we have way more polygons. And now we can smooth everything again more, so let's make like more iterations. So I'll make four iterations, everything's tiny bit smoothed out and now we select a remesher and I'm pressing alt again to click onto the remesher and it automatically applies my remesher to my set here and now we have everything remeshed. The mesh looks really nice and I'm using 10% adapter snap and the mesh density is just in this case 50% and the new soft body engine is really capable of running a lot of polygons but I don't want to go overboard and I think this is really good and in general it's nice to work procedurally but sometimes this can create buggy and weird effects so just to be safe i will copy my file and i'm hiding it and i'm just turning off all the other ones and let's put it into a null that's my original null and that's my sponge as a next thing i thought it would be super easy to just take a sphere make it small like two centimeters i will just scale the sponge a little bit up because cinema is really getting very buggy the smaller the object is and i try to work in real world scale but sometimes it's easier to work at least a little bit bigger then the simulations run way better and i have a very good example for you for this and i think let me check which scene i used for this this was the scene so let's See, it's still cached. This behavior looks extremely unrealistic where the cloth is moving through the ball. And this would even happen if I remove, for example, the floor and make everything even more um, dramatic. So let's remove the cache and cache it again. So you can see that's super weird. And I just used the exact same scene, scaled everything up, and then it all worked perfectly and it looked super normal. So if you're having huge simulation problems, then scaling up your scene might be the last solution if you can't find anything which works for you. Then let's switch back to our project and just in case I'll give it a quick save. So let's make the sphere even a little bit smaller. Then I created an emitter, put the sphere into the emitter. The emitter should be a bit smaller and I don't want to have any speed. So where's the speed? Zero. And let's create a new simulation tag, the rigid body on it. And the emitter should be smaller. Let's make it 10 by 10. Position the emitter onto the right place. Then in my scene, if I press Ctrl D and go into my simulation scene, you can see that I turned off gravity. And I like to do this because I like to work with my own gravity. So sometimes I want it a bit stronger or a bit weaker. And for now, I know that I want... Uh, less gravity so I'll make a value of 400 and now the sponge needs also a tag so let's switch to soft body let's see if the layout jumps back so I hope you can still see it because the screen scaled wrongly um, but I need soft body and well if you want to learn more about soft body I will talk much about this on patreon um, but for now I will leave everything on default and we could create many interesting ways to uh, make this object like hovering but i will choose a super cheap and easy way i'll just put a collider in my scene as well go back to simulation go to collider that's the one at the bottom and i will hide it so that only helps me that my Sponge is not flying away. So that's the first thing you can see nothing is happening. Then you need to go to the emitter and in the particles we need to show render instances. So let's press play and see what's happening. Well, nothing is happening. I think I made that wrongly. Well, there are many issues still happening. So first of all, I clicked the wrong one. I don't want to render instance. I want to render show objects. Now every object, every particle is rendered as a particle. And I was correct. You have to put the tag onto the emitter, not onto the sphere, like in the previous version. And you can see many things are going wrong. So first thing, which is the most obvious one, is the collision margin, which is on default, like 1.5 centimeters, which is way too huge for our scene because it's real world. So I'll drop that down to something like 0.15. Let's see. And now you can see we are having many more issues. For example, you can see that the spheres are falling through 
our sponge. There are many reasons for this. The first one is mass. Mass, I never used it before since 2024, but now this density thing got extremely important because in some scenes I had to change the mass to 0.0001 to get a physical correct simulation. In this case, I know the scene is not that drastic, but we'll definitely need to drop down the density to 0.1 so that the intensity of the sphere is not as strong and they are not falling through the object again. And now you can see we have a little bit of penetration. That's a bit, first of all, I think the sphere is still too big. Let's make it smaller. Let's also just give it more segments. And then let's go into our command D control settings and your scene scale, because it's very small, I will also drop it even smaller to something like five. And when you have objects falling through other objects, it definitely helps to increase your sub steps. I will go with 35 and also my collision is pretty bad. So I'll increase it to 15. And what extra iteration does, I have no idea, but I read in the manual that it doesn't cost much operation, so it's super quick to calculate. I just give myself five extra iterations there. The caveat of increasing the sub steps is that the object gets more stiff. In this case, anyway, the sponge is still too, too jiggly, but overall, we don't have any objects colliding through there anymore. Then we can see the collision margin is still way too big. So let's change the collision margin to 0.05. Then I think the mass is now too weak for these spheres. They're not going through the object as much as I wanted. So let's increase the density back to 0.2. And let's position the emitter a little bit better. Let's go back to frame zero and press play. Yeah, I would say this is definitely going something into the right direction. Overall, it still feels like the collision margin is quite high. All these objects have this hollow space around them, which is strange because now our collision margin is already pretty low. And also I think they're hovering a bit too much. So let's increase the density to 0.3. Then let's check again the collision margin. And that's very small. Usually I don't go that small, but let's even try to make it smaller. Then for the sponge itself, I have the feeling that it's still a bit too jiggly. So let's increase the stiffness of it by just giving another pull to this whole structure. Let's go back to frame zero and see how everything looks. And just one thing, I will change my substats even more to 38, so it's more rigid. And I want to dampen a little bit the whole scene. So let's double the dampening to something like 4. And I think this looks pretty nice. What I did, I just duplicated the sphere and I made one smaller. So let's make this 1.1 and the other one bigger because you can't emit random particles here in the size that doesn't work. And also you can't uh, use any um, color user data in an emitter. But I'm, an I'm just saying this for now because this is how I try to work in the end. And in the end, we will definitely have to do it totally different. So everything we are doing here is for nothing. But I want to just take you with on the journey of trying to solve issues which are so ridiculous. So density wise, perhaps in this scene somehow I can even go back a bit more. So 0.4, yeah. Then what I did is I duplicated my emitter and did put it onto another position. So I have a bit of variation and you have to give it another seat. And now I have the possibility to create four different materials. I will quickly create a redshift standard material, only give it like a color. So I just quickly assign four different redshift materials, which are placeholder for, for something later. Then we just need to adjust our scene. And for now I will only go, what, 150 frames. I thought I'm ready. Nice. This was quite quick. I have a quick scene. Cool. Let's cache it and let's render it. So I'm caching the thing and I will make a quick jump here. So the cache is done. Nice. And then ready to render. But as I said, if you render this like this, this is going to happen. Somehow the MoGraph cache is not really cached. And yeah, I played around a little bit and it's really weird. Then I thought, okay, cool. Let's make a quick, easy fix. Let's just collect uh, select them and bake as alembic. Let's call this alembic and let's hide all the stuff which we did here or not all the stuff, just the two emitters. And let's go back to frame zero, press play and it's like, okay, nice. This is also cool, but, but there are two problems. First problem is you only have two emitter. You can't access the colors or the different variation in these two. So you, you are losing 50% of the value. To work against this, I duplicated all the emitters and always had only one sphere in them and let me see if i still have the scene with the yeah here was the scene where i then 
had many emitters with only one object and I cached them and then I baked everything as a lambic and then I tried to render it and again I thought I am perfectly done but I will show you the but. So the objects are moving relatively quickly and if we switch to a redshift now let's preview the rendering and let's also quickly position the camera a little bit. I want to fit this for now I don't want to see the bathroom in the background so I'll just create a backdrop and it's here so super simple scene motion blur is the key so we want to render i'm using my render settings and by the way again i have to make advertising for patreon i'm talking all about render setting and everything in there so the important stuff is motion blur and i directly want to increase my transformation steps and i have deformation blur and for now, let's leave everything like it is. Uh, I'll just decrease the render size so it's a bit quicker here. And I'll just render it smaller. Then we need to render on this first symbol, the render. And this object will give us a true representation of the final render. And you can see there is zero motion blur. I think it's probably because, the again, the polygon count changes and redshift can't handle it. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's the reason why. So all emitter, alembic, hex didn't work. I had to start over again. And by the way, I also rendered this overnight. Like, yeah, waste of time. And now let's go to the scene where I worked as a final. And you can see I built a slide. So I just used a cloner with 80 clones, which are cloned in one line. And now they're all rolling down. And I had this little blocker, so it's a bit more interesting. Some of them are popping. As I said, the popping effect is super weird and I had this a lot in the stones. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Um, but I hope this will be fixed very soon. Yeah, that was my hack to work uh, around the limitations of an emitter. And what I learned again in the scene, never use an emitter. It's only causing problems. But this scene is rendering perfectly. I just said in the beginning that I have to re-render it because I had an issue with my soft body material and... I used a projection node on planar, but I forgot that the planar projection mode is moving through the object and the sponge is moving. So we can't do this. But other than that, this is the shader for the sponge and I will talk about this more on Patreon. So I want to wrap up this tutorial with the first part of my rigid party experiments, which I think have great potential and I'm really happy to see how cinema is stepping forward here. Just there are some issues which hopefully will be resolved in the future, like hopefully soon. But other than that, I think the animation already looks super nice. And yeah, I am very excited to hear what your thoughts are on the new Cinema 4D version. And yeah, let's have a chat in the comments. I wish you a great day and see you around. Bye bye.